Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos and I have a lot of fun with it. And I frankly think you should have fun with it when you're editing photos. It's fun, it's enjoyable. I mean, I love going out to take photos. I also love to edit photos. Anyway, if you're new here, thanks for coming by. If you're a returning viewer, thanks again for coming back. Today, I've got a photo. I'll just show you the shot. Here it is. I took this almost exactly 11 years ago. It was early August, 2010. This is like five cameras ago and you know thousands of hours of photography ago. It's not a particularly great shot, but I, I really like it. it. It's just been something that's been kind of a personal favorite, even though I took it so long ago. But um, there's some things I need to do to it to improve it because it's too bright. There was a massive amount of fog and I'd probably shoot things differently today. In fact, I'm sure that I would, but regardless, I've got a photo, I wanna make it better. So I'm in on one and I'm starting here with contrast. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump that up a bit. I need a bit more contrast here and I need to take those highlights way down because it's just way too bright. So something about like that, I'm also gonna pull the midtones down a little bit and I'm gonna come down here to temperature and that one's gonna to go to the left as well. And that's about a 30, I want a little bit more blue and I'm gonna give a, a slight bump in tint and a slight bump in vibrance, you know, maybe something about like that. So, you know, already color wise and tones overall, I think it looks a lot better. There it is before and there it is now but there's a number of things I still want to do. So I'm gonna start in effects and I'm gonna start with dynamic contrast. And one of the things that I love about On One is luminosity masking, which is what I'm gonna to apply to this photo because I wanna isolate different sections of the image. So there's the luminosity mask. It's quick, immediate, powerful, and super, but I am gonna make some adjustments with the levels. And so that's allowing me to really kind of refine this mask and create a little bit better overall look to where the um, the edits are applying. So as you probably know, white reveals black conceals. So the stuff in white or the lighter gray, is gonna get more of this edit and the stuff that's darker is gonna get much less of the edit. And if it's black, it's, it's basically getting none of it. So you can see the lighter parts uh, or where this edit is gonna apply. So what I'm gonna do, and if you've been here before, you've seen me do this plenty of times, is I'm coming in here like, a, you know, mid negative 30s and applying that to soften up some of that foggy haze that's in the image. It looks a little bit noisy when I zoom in, but mostly I just wanted to take care of that. And honestly, I think that looks pretty good. So I'm happy with that, but now I wanna copy that mask. And what I'm gonna do is go get dynamic contrast again. And I'm just gonna recycle that mask. Just absolutely love the masking here. So I'm gonna paste, I'm gonna invert. And if I view the mask, I've now basically got the inverted, you know, the opposite of that mask. So now these edits are gonna apply also where it's white, which is the opposite of where I applied them last time. And so I'm just doing something like, you know, low, uh, hang on, let me get out of that view, sorry. Um, that makes it a little hard to see. Uh, I'm gonna do like, you know, 17, 18, 20, somewhere around that with each of these. And just all I'm really doing is just adding a little bit of crisp, a little bit of crunch back into those areas that are in white, which is basically the bridge mostly. So let me hit Z to hide the masking brush. And uh, I don't know how well you can tell, but I've basically created a little bit more crunch in those areas. I think it looks a little bit better. And so now that I've done that, I wanna get into a little bit of color work and I'm gonna start with one of my favorites, which is color balance. In the highlights, I'm gonna start in the hue of about a 230 and change. So something about like that. And the amount is gonna be high, uh, you know, not real high, but like, you know, low 60s, let's say. So maybe 60, 61. And as you can see, I'm just creating a little bit of blue in the highlights. Fog is cool to shoot in. I didn't really like how it looks so gray and hazy and kind of flat. I wanted to create a bit more color. I like color. If you're new here, you'll uh, you'll see that uh, in this image. And if you've been here before, you probably know that as well. But I do like my colors. So I'm gonna go uh, blue in the highlights and I'm also gonna go a similar kind of blue in the midtone. So maybe something about like that and the amount is kind of similar. So, you know, let's call it, you know, I don't know, something like that. Basically, I just like blue. Um, and I think the blue looks good. This was sunrise, by the way. And so you can see there's a nice light in the distance. This is the Bay Bridge in San Francisco, in case I didn't see that uh, yet. But there it is before I applied color balance. And there it is now. So I, I like those colors. They appeal to my senses much better than before, where it was a bit more muted and gray. 
But if it's too much blue, obviously this is your choice. Regardless, color balance, super powerful. I absolutely love that. Uh, and speaking of blue, I'm actually gonna get a little bit more blue. I'm gonna go get photo filter. And the hue, I'm gonna leave it 240, but I'm gonna take the amount down to about uh, eight or nine, something like that. This is just putting a little bit more blue across the entire photo. And again, this is just something I like, uh, but I don't wanna overdo the saturation. So I'm gonna go like a negative 10 or 12. And let me show you what photo filter has done. There it is before, and there it is after. Just a little bit more blue. Um, I just like this time of day. So like blue hour in a city with lights on is kind of my favorite thing. So I tend to accentuate the blue. Obviously every step here is optional and you have lots of control if you decide, hey Jim, way too blue for me. You know, easy, easy fix. So I've done that. I'm gonna add a couple of more things to really make this image pop. The first one is sunshine. I really like this filter a lot. I use it all the time. I think it gives a nice little pop to the image. I actually am gonna warm it up a little bit. So maybe like, a, you know, seven or something. And the saturation is gonna go up a little bit as well. So maybe something like that. Let me show you the before and after. So there it is before the sunshine filter and there it is after. You can see it's a nice little pop, a little bit of contrast, a little bit of pop and colors. I just kind of like it. So at this point, I was like, hey, I like this image, but it's still a little bit hazy. And then I realized, hey, there's a, there's a haze slider over in develop. So I went back over here to the develop tab and I got haze and I took that down about a 20. And that really creates a bit more mood and a bit more contrast in the image. It's removing that haze. I think it looks pretty cool. Again, it's fairly intense, so a season to taste. I kind of like where it is though, so I like that, but then I decided mm, uh, maybe a little bit too blue even for me, so I went over here to color adjustment, and I got the blue, and so I clicked on this blue, and I just took the saturation down about a negative 10, something about like that, and I took the brightness down about a negative you know, 14 or 15, and so I'm just darkening that blue, removing some of the intensity with that negative saturation adjustment. So if you look at it before, there it is. And after, there it is. Just a, I'm just muting it a little bit because all my moves have created quite a bit of blue. Again, completely in your control. If it's too blue for you, that's cool. Um, you can fix that easily and adjust that easily. So I'm gonna go back uh, to one more filter here and then I got one more move after that to wrap it up. And the filter that I used is Glow. And what I did is I went down here and I got this Orton clean, which I really like, but it's way too moody and contrasty. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go to like a 25, 28, 29, something about like that. And I'm going to take that slider all the way to the end uh, or down to one, I guess you can't go to zero. But if you look at this before, there it is before. And then after the Orton clean and that low amount just gives it a nice little bit of pop um, and a little bit of moodiness. It's a little bit like the mystical slider in uh, Luminar, which I love. Uh, so just a little bit of that contra, I don't know, I just like adding that little bit of mood back to it. But again, you can come in here and reduce. In fact, I think I am gonna reduce just a little bit down to about a 20. And then the last thing I did is I went back to develop and I actually went to the exposure slider and I brightened it a little bit. I brought it up to about a fit, you know, 0 0.15, I say 15, but 0.15. Um, if I reset that to zero, you can see it's a bit darker. And while I like that, I felt like it was a little bit too much. So I wanted to pull that up just a little bit. And that was the exposure slider. So basically just a global adjustment to really bring that back from being a little too dark and a little too moody. But as you can see, I used countless effects here. I mean, if you look at them, I've got what, seven different filters, dynamic contrast twice, color balance, photo filter, sunshine, a color adjustment for the blue and glow for a little bit of that Orton, and then a number of edits here on the develop tab as well. And as you can see, and this is something I do a lot, uh, but I don't necessarily always talk about it, and that is I'll do my basic edits and develop, then I'll go to effects, and then many times I'll come back to develop and tweak things. But if I know I'm gonna do big moves instead of going to develop, I'd rather go to local adjustment and apply something globally, which you can do and, and I've done in previous videos. But that's given me a final photo that I really like. I, I, I'm quite happy with this photo. Let me show you the before. If you remember, really bright, really muted, that sort of thing. And then afterwards, 
much more intense. It still might be a little bit blue. Maybe I'll come back in here to this color adjustment and reduce that saturation just a little bit more. Again, season to taste. I mean, do whatever you want with your own photos. This is an example workflow for this image, but if you look at the before and after, I think we were able to really make a massive difference. I really wanted to overcome that fog, but yet, you know, it's clear that it's foggy and cloudy. You can see all that in the sky, even in the finished photo but I wanted to give it a bit more oomph, a bit more drama, and a bit more punch. And that was easy to do with all these tools and filters and the masking in on one. It's beautiful, it's powerful, it's a great tool, I love it. That's how I did this one, my friends. I hope it gives you some ideas and things to think about in your own images. Thanks for stopping by. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you really soon in the next video, and adios.